Happy Saturday to you. Thank you so much for joining us once again for the airing of grievances. My name is Eric Raymer. This is Robert Grieve. Morning to you. And we are very happy that you have joined us. This morning we've got a couple of things to ask you. The first of which is if you are new here, uh, we want to say welcome. Very nice to have you along. And if you don't mind, we would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up. That Please. like button gives us uh, a little credibility with the YouTube algorithm and it allows uh, YouTube to share this video with more people. And as you will see, this particular video is going to be compelling enough that we want to get as many eyes on it as possible. And uh, then if you are a regular here, we say good morning. Thank you again for joining us. And uh, if any way possible, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button, click the notify bell, and uh, that'll let you know that we're producing another video. And those happen every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. in the Mountain Standard Time, so we're happy to have you join us here then. All right, Rob. So in the state of Texas... Happy Saturday oh, to you. Yes, absolutely, to you to as you. well. In the state of Texas... Uh, there was recently a uh, House committee that uh, was addressing uh, HB or House Bill 1131, mm -hmm. which uh, if you are just kind of uh, on the surface on this, it, one might be led to think that it's just a parts bill, but as we will see, there's more to it than that, and we're going to introduce that to you. Now, don't tune out though, because this is this this is a human study. This is this is a, a real life case study of real people who um, who are, are making a plea to the industry, to the legislation about the industry, mm -hmm. and the way that we for the consumers on behalf of the consumer. That that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, right. and and it's incredible that we get to to take a peek inside, you know, this process. Yeah. It's fascinating to watch and, and to listen to these people that are so passionate uh, on both sides of the fence. Absolutely. Uh, but for different reasons. Yeah, and it's those reasons that we want to highlight, right? We want to we want to challenge you, our viewers, to keep an open eye, ear, and heart to listen for the motivation of the people who are speaking. Yeah. Right? Yep. I think that's a, a real telling moment in the next few minutes uh, as we show these things. Um, the, uh, the the first person to speak, and we'll show you the video here in just a moment, is uh, Representative Clardy from the state of Texas in the House of Representatives, and he is going to introduce the bill. Shall we take a look at that? Let's go. Let's go to the videotape. Time, the chair lays out House Bill 1131 and recognizes Representative Clardy to explain his bill. Thank you for waiting patiently, my friend. I know you've been here since the very beginning of the no, hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members, uh, for the opportunity to lay out the... Can, can we exchange your purple and white for gold and green today, maybe? Uh, you know, I like gold and green, but I'm going to stay colorblind today. We'll, we'll keep with purple and white, which is a little bit royally above green and green and gold. But, uh, but there is a committee substitute, uh, Chairman. Yes, there is. There is a committee substitute. Chair lays out a committee substitute for House Bill 1131. All right. And thank you. Members of service, before you may have heard this, this is the third time I've come before this committee uh, pushing this particular bill. And you may think to yourself, uh, contrary to my personality, I'm not a stubborn man. And that I'm not, uh, and that this issue is not getting stale. In fact, I would point to the committee substitute is, is really making the point for me why this continues to be not just an important issue, but with each passing day, a more pressing issue. The committee substitute removes two, two lines from page one on the original bill. And before then, we, we excluded uh, coverage for a uh, replacement of windshields from coverage. But in just that brief period of time, we've been pointed out by the automobile manufacturers how heads-up displays and other active windshields are now parts of c common components of vehicles. Okay, so, I mean, we're starting off with windshields. Right. And, and you know, it's not just have your windshield replaced anymore. Because windshields, they're almost a living part of the car these days. Because they have cameras and technology that go through all those sorts of them, head heads up displays yeah. and all sorts of stuff. And you know, right out of the box, we have a representative there talking about windshields. Yeah, 
they're, they must be, I guess, a little bit important. <laughs> I think you have a gift for understatement. <laughs> Clearly. All right, you ready? Go. So the engineering, the technology has changed, and with each passing day, our cars get uh, more and more complex. They have more sensors, they have more air airbag deployments, there's more systems that are designed into it for the safety of the driving public. And it's important when those cars are damaged and need repairs that they be done in compliance with the manufacturer's requirements. The days of the shade tree mechanic are long gone. The days of the shade tree mechanic are gone. There's a statement. It's just not the same environment when we used to be able to climb into our car's engine cavities and fix the you know the things that were wrong. Yeah. These are these are computers. These are lots of computers. They're very very complex. And and he calls out that there's manufacturer uh, procedures in order to fix these vehicles. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of shops out there that A, are aware of them, B, could find them, C, would understand what they were saying, D, have the equipment <laughs> to, to properly do it. Uh, You're telling me that there are, there are not a lot of shops out there that are aware of all this stuff or have all those tools and resources? There's, there's way too many of them. How is the public supposed to know which shops... Are aware it's a good question and one that we keep exploring with every episode that we put together so uh, this is really important testimony so let's let's go back to the tape all right and particularly when it comes to the safety components of these vehicles so and when you look at this bill it, it's two things it's a fairness bill for first it's a fairness bill first off both for the, the driving public of Texas and the consumers of insurance products who expect if their car is damaged, it'll be repaired uh, pursuant to the policy that they have paid for with their own dollars. It's also a fairness issue for those who perform the repairs. And in, in prior years, you may have some of this testimony here today, those people that, that are committed to repairing these cars have invested hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars to stay current with the technology that's required, not just to align a frame or, or check uh, brake pads or make adjustments, but to do these very technical repairs. And it's detailed in the manuals prepared by the manufacturers. But, but more importantly, yes, it's a fairness issue for the consuming public and, and, and for the uh, repair um, uh, performers, but it's a safety issue. And you're going to hear very compelling evidence uh, concerning really what I'd say is the, the, the hallmark uh, case that highlights this problem, the, the Sebashon case out of Dallas County where they bought a used van, unbeknownst to them, nothing showed up in the, the uh, repair sheet, the, the car fax. Uh, the, the roof had been replaced from a prior accident, and instead of being repaired and, and tack welded in 100 places as required when you replace that roof component, which is critical to the structural integrity of a vehicle, uh, it was done with glue. They glued it on, which caused a failure. Yeah, and it, again, it's, it is, in one sense, it's kind of funny. We're talking about something that's very serious here. Right. Uh, and we're, we're talking about a roof that is a structural piece all the pieces together welded on your vehicle are structural in nature because they work as a component, as a you know, a whole assembly. We talked about the transfer of energy yep. in another one of our videos. I'll put a link to it up at the top. Yeah. And Serious. I, 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 I almost think I heard somebody laugh. Well, if you go back and look at that video, it looks like he turned to that and addressed it as well. And I think you're going to actually hear him address it a little more in just a second yeah this, this is a lot of things funny is not one of them and when you hear and and the first time i i i watched this i didn't realize that marcia a passenger in that vehicle is in the room the, i'm like you're laughing at this situation wait till you hear from marcia yeah marcia sebashan is the uh the, the case study that is being referred to here and uh she will wrap up this video so s stay tuned for that it's heartbreaking but when you hear what happened to the Sebashons, uh, it, it is, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. Uh, but the horrific injuries that they suffered and the price that they have paid as a family, uh, it, it, it's horrific. Uh, so I'm going to let them tell that story rather than me. Um, you know, Representative Paul, we were in the, in the back room. You weren't shirking your duties. You had other things to attend to. And so, but you said, oh, is this, is this the parts bill? 
And, and I appreciate that. You remember us talking about this previously. But this is, is more than just a, a parts bill. This is more about the process and the procedures. How do you do repair safely and correctly? Um, quality parts are part of it, absolutely. Uh, not requirement, and we've had this battle before, just the OEM parts, the original equipment manufacturer parts, but those parts that are that are, are similar and like in kind that can do the, the work as well. It doesn't require just the OEM parts, but it does require that uh, the parts that are used in a repair, if necessary, are, are quality, quality parts. You know, I'm not sure what to do with that because he, he mentions that they need to be quality parts. Right. I would insist they need to be OEM parts in order to know what quality they are. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, it, it feels like there was a little politics going on there. Yeah, yeah. Butter, buttering the, the bread on both sides. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, we here on the airing of grievances are very crystal clear in our uh, delineation of OEM parts designed, and OEM stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer. Yep. And uh, those parts designed, tested, and uh, retested over and Crash over again. Crash tested. Yeah. I mean, if you want to know if you have a quality part, buy an OEM part. Buy an OEM part. That, that's it. There's there's no other way to know if that part is going to do its job yeah. in a subsequent accident. That's our view. Let's keep watching. Okay. So, you know, I think Texans pay a lot for our insurance. Uh, you know, we can look at guy codes, you know, the, the blizzards and all the other things that are trying to get us to compare rates. But the fact remains, uh, automobile insurance is a very expensive product. Uh, likewise, for uh, most uh, people in Texas, their automobile is, uh, if not the largest, one of the largest investments they make uh, with their funds. So this hits people in the pocketbook, but also can hit them very much in the real world in which they live if repairs aren't made safely and properly. So. Uh, I appreciate your time. Uh, I will uh, advise there is no fiscal note on this bill. There are some witnesses. I'd be happy to answer questions now, and I would respectfully uh, reserve uh, the right to close. Members, any questions? Thank you, Representative. Thank you, Mr. All right, Rob. So there we heard Representative Clardy uh, introduce the bill. Yep. This is a bill that has been on the books a couple of times, uh, and it's in this iteration. Uh, he established the, the reasoning for bringing the bill again, and ultimately it comes down to safety, right? Yep, there it is. All right. The next person to address the House committee is uh, somebody who stands in opposition, opposition to this bill. And I think it's important to... Um, Let's see what their motive is. I think they make it very, very clear. Let's go. Chair now calls Kevin Fisk. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Kevin Fisk. I'm with LKQ Corporation. Um, I'm here in opposition to the bill. LKQ is the world's largest supplier and distributor of aftermarket, recycled, and remanufactured auto parts to the auto repair industry. We also provide advanced driver assistance system calibration services to the auto repair industry. Is something uh, that we are um, the largest now independent provider of that service. Um, we're opposed to the bill because there are criteria set for auto parts that no uh, part manufacturer could meet simply because the OEMs are not going to give their specs or standards for what that might be. Um, they would never provide that information to competitors. Well, there it is. You heard him say it, that this would, uh, would they, they would never, the OEMs would never allow the competition to play in the game. Why should they? They, they spent all the time, all the energy, 
the ingenuity, the inventing of all these things, the, why would they hand that off to somebody else so that they can make money on the backs of all their research? Right. It, it's... I, I don't know anybody else that would do it. I mean, you mean songwriter writes a song? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, but but there it is. I mean, we, we talked about, uh, you know, keeping your eyes and ears open for the motivation. And uh, this gentleman, who is uh, Mr. Fisk from LKQ, which stands for Like, Kind, and Quality, and they are the largest supplier of aftermarket and uh, other uh, used and salvaged parts. Remanufactured right. and all sorts of stuff. But his motivation is clear. I'll play it again. And and as I said, the motivation is clear. It's, uh, it's, it's about competition. It's about their feeling hard done by that they can't make the money that the manufacturers who have, have invested hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars yep. to into. provide a safe vehicle for you to drive right somebody wants the ability to copycat it and you know make money off of it it sounds a little like sour grapes to me kind of kind of and and oh by the way they mentioned that they now do uh calibrations calibrations and so on and so forth whatever okay let's go to back to the tape uh, we feel that this bill would stifle healthy competition, increase the cost of repair for the vehicle, and eliminates the consumer choice on what types of parts could be used to repair the vehicle. Um, for those reasons, we're opposed to the bill. Um, there might be a better approach um, in how this is handled. Certainly, um, I'm, I'm familiar with the case cited by the sponsor uh, in the accident. And he referred to uh, the process that was used to repair the vehicle. It wasn't about the roof. It was about the process. All right. It wasn't about the roof. It was about the process. That's what he said. That's correct. Okay. Uh, that is absolutely 100% correct. Uh, the process was, it was made up. It was, you know, whatever that tech or the shop wanted to do, they did it. It had no resemblance to the way the manufacturer has uh, written the procedures to do, which are available to every shop. Yes. Uh, so he, he is correct. I will say this. If you were to ask him, do you sell used roofs, cut them off of cars, and sell them to body shops to put on somebody else's car, you're never going to find that an acceptable procedure either. But he sells hundreds of thousands of them. Interesting. He didn't mention that. No. Uh, I don't think that strengthens his case. No. Uh, no. All right. So um, we're not done with him yet, though. At least we're oh, not. Oh, no. We're no, not. No, but no, the, no. Uh, the committee is not quite done with him yet. Are there any questions? Members, any questions? I do have one, sir. What about the airbags? The airbags. Well, when there's airbags involved, you have to replace it. And do you have a third-party market? We, we do it have airbags. Is it safe? We do have airbags. We do replace airbags. Is that is that is not from the uh, manufacturers, right? I mean, is a third-party. There, one? there are recycled uh, airbags. We we can take those out of. Uh, of vehicles and replace them. They have to be recertified um, to make sure that they will perform safely. Okay. How do they recertify that an airbag is safe to reuse? Oh, that that I don't have the the answer to that. Okay. Uh, okay. I just got to say this: if you and you absolutely should always be aware of what's on your estimate, repair plan, blueprint, how your vehicle is going to be repaired and what it's going to be repaired with. Yeah. If you see recycled airbag on a piece of paper, run as fast as you can. We do not use, uh, no respectable shop will ever use a recycled airbag. We know nothing about it. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you if you would allow that in uh, in your daughter's or your son's cars, uh, but I, I think I know the answer. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it's unbelievable. You know, there's. Uh, I heard a rumor of a shop being uh, investigated because they would buy used airbags and re-put them back together. There's no way to tell if the airbag is going to do its job or not unless you put a new airbag in it. Yeah. If, it, if it says recycled anything when it comes to a safety component, run as fast as you can. Yeah, it, it, it bears to, uh, to say again and to show you the video of uh, the deployment of a, uh, an airbag that Honda put out mm. uh, a while ago having to do with a watermelon. And if the deployment is off by even so much as a one hundredth of a second, uh, bad things happen. I've also heard of airbags, you know, what they call recycled airbags, and I'm not talking about LKQ, so I don't want to cross cross lines there. Sure. But there are airbags that have nothing in them, but they plastic weld up the seams so you can't tell, and there's... It's just an airbag. It's a shell of an airbag, but there's actually no airbag or no detonation or anything that's in, in, in behind it. Only OEM brand new when it comes to safety items, restraint items like an airbag, seatbelt, anything like that. There's, we do not recondition those parts ever. Well said. Okay. I'm, I, I, I don't have the answer. This discussion has been going on for many years with Ancoil. Are you familiar with Ancoil? And coil? Yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. So well, the same issue has been coming up for yeah. years after years, right? Any questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Rob. Uh, that is the end of his testimony. Um, and now we're going to see, at least for the purposes of this video, the star of the show. It, absolutely. And it's... I, I feel so bad for that family. It is it is heart wrenching. This this is the case. I can't even imagine yeah. what they went through. Yeah. This is the case study that uh, the accident actually happened back in 2013, uh, but it made national news uh, for the purposes of what you're about to see. And the only reason that we're talking about it now is because being in the industry, we uh, the whole industry has uh, turned their attention and eyes towards the uh, the litigation that took place in this case. It was horrible. Forget yeah. about the litigation. It's, it, it, the pain is never going to go away. It's so true. All um, right. So, let's uh, let's yeah. take a look at Marge. Before we do that, oh, yeah. let's, let's keep in mind the motivation of that last person that was representing a gigantic corporation. Yeah. It's, it's all, about money. It's all about the money and competition, right? It's about money. Yeah. These people went through what they went through because of money. So let's let's hear from Marsha. Chair now calls Marcia C. Bashan. Good afternoon. Please state your name, who you're with, and uh, are you for or against the bill? Absolutely. My name is Marsha C. Bichon. And I am here representing myself, um, and I'm for this bill, okay. strongly for this bill. I appreciate all of your time um, and hearing this again. Um, my husband and I are the case being discussed here. We got married and had goals in mind, education goals. My husband was in school to be a nurse. I'm a social worker in the state of Texas. Um, we had a budget. We were making way on getting out of debt and we had to purchase a new vehicle. So based on how our parents had both taught us, we researched gas mileage and reliability and repair costs for vehicles. We looked at number of previous owners. We looked at mileage per year for those owners. And we still have to this day, the original Carfax report that we printed out for this vehicle showing no repair work done on it. She's us. Absolutely. She's, she, she's us. Yeah. She, they're, they're a hardworking couple, you know, just getting off in life. Right. You know, paying down their debt, and they have to get a vehicle, 
and not just any vehicle they do their research yep. uh they go through you know a lot of effort to pick out the right vehicle for them absolutely and it, it, it's and they trust the information that they're given that there had been no previous accidents no reports of previous accidents and certainly no reports of previous repairs Right, and and I will say this uh, about uh, Carfax because she mentions Carfax. Yes, Carfax is an excellent tool. It is not the be all and end all. There is no regulation that says if this happens, it needs to be on a Carfax, or if that happens, it needs to be on a Carfax. There, there's no rules. So, if something gets reported, then you'll know about it. But if it doesn't seem to get reported, you won't know about it. It's not going to be on the Carfax. And, you know, it's, it's just not the most reliable thing. It is a tool. That sounds like another house bill uh, that, that could or should be raised. Mm-hmm. Uh, but certainly not the focus here. But, but, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Because but, you know, most importantly, she's us. Yeah. She's just a regular everyday person. And wait till you hear the rest of it. A few months after we purchased this vehicle, um, we were heading to my grandparents' house in the hill country of Texas for Christmas. A vehicle hydroplaned and crashed into us. And as you can see on the photograph here, the roof that was attached with adhesive instead of welding detached from the car and it did not sustain the impact and transfer the impact around us like it should have for our safety. She does a great job of laying that out. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, really, she just lays it out right there. Well, she, she makes the case of the energy conversation that we had. We've had plenty of energy conversations, right. and energy is critical. And anything that gets in the way, any piece that you put in the car or any bad repair that you put in the car gets in the way of the energy being transferred in the right direction to protect you and your ocup- occupants. Yes. And this roof clearly you could the shop could have looked up the proper procedures and it's kind of uncommon in this industry it's gaining a little speed but it's uncommon that you would look up the procedures it says how many welds it says what type of welds it says exactly where they want the welds and instead of welding it on this shop glued it on and the reason they glue it on or glued it on is because the car goes through the system faster and everybody makes money. So faster, in this case, ends up deadlier. Yes. People made money on that repair. That She'll t- talk about the results of that, but, you know, it's these procedures are out there. They need to be followed. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the point. They are out there. They're accessible to any and every body shop. And uh, further on in another episode of uh, The Area of Grievances, we'll talk about uh, how they're even accessible to you, the public. Uh, you, you can get these procedures. And so it, it, uh, it, it's so unthinkable that people cut corners in order to push a car through faster and make the money that they could make and then... And, and now, now you have an unsuspecting person. Absolutely. Because, you know, maybe they did a great paint job on it, and you can't tell that the roof was replaced. It's not on Carfax. Yeah. And yet, these people's lives were put in jeopardy. It's beyond, it's beyond thinkable. Wait till you hear what happened next. Instead, I suffered a torn aorta, perforated intestines, Um, bones broken throughout my body, and spinal damage that should have killed me. Um, My husband was the less lucky of the two of us. He suffered burns, which he remembers seeing happen to this day. He was trapped in the vehicle. Um, He's permanently disabled since this wreck. And then as we were in the process of trying to heal from this, we got the information from our attorney that all of this happened to save some money for insurance, that they determined that their judgment about what was safe for repairing this vehicle was better than the original engineers who designed it and crash tested it for safety. I don't think I could have said it any better. 
No, uh, and she raised the, the, the issue. You know, we've been talking about the shop who is ultimately responsible for the repair. Every time. But the insurance company that is driving the, uh, you know, the, the, the cost, which means cut corners on cost, use aftermarket parts, uh, the shop is responsible for an improper repair. They're responsible to you. Yeah. They're responsible to you, uh, and the insurance company, do, do they come in and say, oh, don't weld that on properly, uh, glue it on instead. We'll get the car out faster and we'll save a couple of rental days at fourteen ninety five a day. I don't see them saying that. Uh, they don't, but, and they'll always distance themselves from the conversation because we're the repair experts right. and, and we did the repair. Right. So, <clears throat> and that is on the shop. Yeah. That, that's on the shop. Uh, and f as far as I'm concerned, it should be on the technician too. Just a quick point of uh, clarification for the, uh, if you just are joining us now, uh, we did not do this repair. No, of course not. Uh, but we as a, an industry, as, a, as the uh, collision centers across America, we're the ones responsible for the, sh the, the repair that yes. happens uh, in the shop. And it's just, you know, you know, it goes back to energy, goes back to uh, if the car had been repaired properly. I mean, the fuel cell exploded and fire started coming up into the car. It was hit so hard and didn't have the strength of the roof to hold the car and direct the energy the right way. The doors jammed closed and her husband was in a car the that was locked. on fire. And the seatbelt locked. All of it. Yeah. All of it. And and this is because we didn't look up the procedures. Uh, you know, it's interesting. The insurance companies will say they don't dictate how to repair the vehicle. They sure do. Uh, by and, and they do it by not including steps uh, that the shop says needs to be required. They just, right. you know, don't. We don't feel like paying for that. Yeah, we don't think that's necessary. Uh, like they're the engineers or know anything about repairing a vehicle. And we have thousands and thousands of case studies, even through these halls. Absolutely. Of that conversation happening between the insurance adjusters and uh, and, and the professionals in the shop. Yep. So this is not something that is isolated to the state of Texas. This is not something that is isolated Absolutely not. Uh, to one case study for this poor family. Uh, th this is rampant, which is why we are asking you, please share this video. Go ahead, copy the link and share it on your social media. Tell your friends, tell your family about this, because this is so important for the for, for the average you and I driver out there. Yep, let's keep going. Yeah. And the result of that was all of these injuries and devastation in our life. My husband's career and education was taken from him. Our marriage was never the same. Our plans for our family and our life, um, we will never parent children. Um, we both missed out on the last years of our grandparents' lives before dementia uh, really took that away from us. So when we allow people to make changes that are going to impact the structural integrity of these vehicles, it undermines the process um, when they're proving insufficient repairs. The only way to prove that those repairs are sufficient are through adequate testing that shows that they are. We Living in Texas, I'm a clinical social worker. I'm licensed through the state of Texas. I'm regulated through the state of Texas. I am not allowed to go practicing in the state of Texas as a social worker with techniques on my clients that are not tested and reliable and valid to show being effective for them. And I cannot imagine making a choice in my profession that affects the life, health, and safety of others based on what I have deemed to be good enough. I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, it's it's not only in the collision industry. I mean, she's she's saying it, we're professionals, right? And we're professionals at, at carpentry. We're professionals at plumbing. There are standards. We're, they're social workers. You know, there's, you know, when you 
engage whatever service you need, garage door or whatever, repair. You're, you're counting on them looking out for your best interest, yes. not a third party bill payer's right. best interest. And uh, I mean, she, she said it perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I just feel so horrible for these people. I do as well. All right, let's finish this up. Okay. I would never do that. And they shouldn't be allowed to either when people are at risk. People in Texas who buy new cars should be able to know that their cars are going to be repaired back to the condition they purchased them in. And people, many of whom in the state of Texas, cannot afford to only buy new vehicles and can only buy pre-owned. They also deserve to know that prior to their ownership, these vehicles were taken care of in a way that maintains the safety of the vehicle they researched and purchased. I'm absolutely welcome to answer any questions, but I'm definitely here asking you please to support House Bill 1131. I know this video is, is a little longer than normal, but the message is so important to us, me, you, anybody driving, uh, you know, how the vehicle is repaired if it's been in an accident is critical. And it's not something that shortcuts should be taken on. Yeah. Uh, here's, you know, it's, it's just a horrible situation, um, but there's consequences. And sometimes they're not just consequences on you, they're consequences on other people. And, Absolutely. Uh, this is a horrific case of something that went wrong. Yeah. And we are doing our very best by way of bringing this to your attention to educate you so that you are aware of god forbid you get into an accident of any nature or sort you're aware of the working mechanism behind the scenes that uh you know you, you need to find an advocate for you and that advocate we it's critical we suggest is a shop that takes the same stance about uh quality oem parts and procedures, looking up the procedures every single time because they can even change year to year, model oh, to model. Month to month they can change. Right. You gotta look them up on every single car, on every single repair. Yeah. So there you go, folks. That's uh, our episode for today. And if you've made it this far, thank you. Please do share this with your social media. That's not just us asking for uh, likes or anything like no, that. No, no, no. This is not about that. No, we really need to get this message out. And you're the vehicle. You're the people who can actually make that happen. And on behalf of Rob and myself and the team here at Nylon's Collision Center in Denver, Colorado, we want to say thank you for watching the airing of grievances. We'll be back again next week. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next Saturday morning at 9.30 Mountain Standard Time. Happy Saturday.